Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you guys are new, be sure to subscribe, like the video if it is helpful for you guys. Today we are going to be doing a start to finish how to settle me on a color t-shirt. So I hope you guys do enjoy this video and comment down below if you guys have any video ideas for me or any tutorials that you'd like me to do. I love making videos for you guys, so any ideas are welcomed down in the comments. Anyway, like I said, today we are going to be selling me color t-shirts. These are sublimation t-shirts, meaning they are 100% polyester t-shirts. And if you guys are interested in these blanks, I will have them linked down below. They are from AJ Blanks. If you have not seen Angela Jasmina on YouTube, definitely go check out her YouTube channel. She is the one that sells these blanks. So be sure to check out my links down in the description. If you guys are looking for sublimation t-shirts, I'm super excited to do this video for you guys because I've been looking for colored t-shirts and these are gonna be super fun to try out. So let's get right into this video. We're on the computer now and here are both of our PNGs that we're gonna be using today. We have Stay Spooky on this one, and it's just kind of like a retro PNG. And then here is this one right here. And I purchased both of these designs off of the same Etsy shop, AZ Addy Designs. And she's had 12,000 sales, star seller, five stars. So I love all of her designs. And here's a real quick clip of some of the designs that she has. Some baseball ones, summer, 4th of July. I don't know who this seller is, but she does a really great job with designing. So be sure to go check out her shop. All right, so let's go ahead and print off these designs. I've told you guys before in other videos, if you are a beginner, you want to look for designs that say PNG, sublimation PNG, and then over here, same thing, retro summer PNG. And those are the best files to sublimate with. They're just super clear and they print really well. Like always, I do not put this in a software to print it off. I print it straight off of the print preferences. In a second, I will show you. And today I am going to be doing a 13 by 19 print so I can show you guys how to use the 13 by 19 paper in the Epson ET15000. So let me go downstairs and show you guys how to load it and print off a 13 by 19 so you get a nice, large, beautiful print. Here's the sublimation paper that we use. It is the A-Sub sublimation paper, 125G, 13 inch by 19 inch. And we do use the 125G, eight and a half by 11 as well. But for this large print on this t-shirt, I do wanna show you guys how we print a 13 by 19 with the Epson ET15000. I did have somebody ask the other day if they can just use regular sublimation paper and regular ink. And no, you cannot. In order to make a sublimation print on a t-shirt, you need to have some sort of sublimation printer. It can either be a sublimation printer or you can convert a printer. Meaning you can take a printer and fill it with sublimation ink to make it a sublimation printer. The easiest printers to do that with are the Epson EcoTanks, which is the ET15000. ET stands for EcoTank, meaning it's over here so it's easier to understand. So these are your tanks that you're going to be filling with sublimation ink. You really need to start with a brand new printer so you don't have to empty these tanks out. You're basically filling this with sublimation ink. We've always just stuck with Cosmos ink because it prints really well. And we recommend it because you just take the top off and just flip it over and fill up each of these containers with sublimation ink, if that makes sense. So I'm just trying to explain this to people that are new. So you don't need syringes or anything with these bottles, which is why they are so popular. I have a whole video guys of how to fill your sublimation ink. Next, you're gonna need your sublimation paper and then a press, either a tumbler press for making tumblers or mugs or a t-shirt press. I will try to make another video of all the things that you need and explain the sublimation better in a different video. Let's go ahead and load our sublimation paper though. Normally with an eight and a half by 11, you use this bottom tray right here. Down here is for eight and a half by 11 prints for smaller prints. And this is called your main tray, main feed. And then back here is your rear tray or your rear feed. And that is where your 13 by 19 and larger paper goes. And then right here, you're gonna see it says paper size and paper type. We don't ever mess with any of those settings. We just load the paper and the printer automatically selects that. Um, so you really don't have to do anything right here. Okay, and we are gonna go ahead and open up this right here so the paper doesn't fall on the floor. Open up the tray. And like I said in our other videos, 
be sure to grab the 125G, not the 120G. 110 sheets in this box. All of our sublimation paper and things that we use for our business and sublimation are going to be linked down in the description and they are also on our Amazon storefront. And you guys see how long this paper is. It is 13 by 19. And you're just gonna load the paper. You wanna make sure that blue piece is all the way opened so that the paper fits down in there. So just pull it towards you and then put the paper in. You don't have to force it or anything. It'll drop right in there. I think I am going to do the Stay Spooky on the gray shirt and then this summery one on the pink shirt. Let me know what you guys think. Now I'm gonna show you guys how I estimate the size. Literally, I just print it off. So let's do this one first. I have my PNG. Then you want to go to File, scroll all the way down to Print. And if you guys are new to sublimation and you bought a Epson ET15000, if you're wanting to print a 13 by 19, you need to make sure to select the correct 15,000 that's in your print selections. So you see I have Epson 15,000, another one, another one. This one down here is for EcoSolvent, that's a different printer. I have an Epson 15,000 for EcoSolvent as well. I made a video like two or three years ago showing how to print a 15,000, I mean, showing how to print a 13 by 19, and one of these will not let you print a 13 by 19. One of them doesn't even have the option for 13 by 19, um, which is a Super BA3. So we're gonna go with Epson 15,000 Series 3. You don't need to mess with presets, no fancy settings, none of that, it's so simple, guys. Three presets, none, paper size, Super BA3 is what you're looking for. Super BA3 13 by 19 is what you want. Here is where you're going to be selecting the size of your print. So you can do auto rotate off, scale. You can see at 91% that would be a very huge print, but that would be great for like a pillow. So I usually just estimate, and I feel like I'm going to try it at, let's just see what 75 looks like. I'm just going to try 80%, 85. All right, I'm going to try it at 85, and I'm going to do that for both prints. Media quality. You do not have to do feed from or the media type. For the iMac and the Epson 15000, when you use those two together, you don't really have to select the feed or the media type. Some people will tell you to do it. That's fine if you would like to try it that way. I'm just showing you guys how I do it. All right, and then the quality, I do click best. Next, you wanna go to layout and you wanna select flip horizontally, right there. If you don't do this, when you go to press it, the print will come out backward, so all the words would be backward on here. So you need to make sure that you flip horizontally. Okay, and then on the paper handling, you don't have to really select any of this. I usually do click scale to fit paper size though. And then on watermark and printer info, I don't even do any of that. And it is ready to print, guys. And I will be doing the same thing with this image right here. And before I go and print off the other print, I did want to show you guys the design on the t-shirt. And it looks like it's going to be the perfect size. I did print that at 85% if you guys are just wanting to copy what I did today. Um, this is a medium shirt, like I said. And here is the second print. My lighting down in this basement isn't very good, but the colors are actually very pretty. And obviously the print isn't going to be perfectly bright and vibrant on the sublimation paper but when you go to press it on the shirt, it's gonna come out super nice and vibrant, hopefully on these color shirts anyway, because this is my first time using them. And I'm just super excited to try them out for you guys. Now you wanna take your scissors and cut all the way around this design. It doesn't have to be perfectly along the edges. You're just taking a little bit all the way around, just because if you don't do that with sublimation paper, it will leave lines or specks all around your design. You wanna do it on both sides and top and bottom. And I will show you guys the cutout as soon as I get it done. So let me grab my scissors and do this real quick. All right guys, and before I go ahead and cut that design out, I do wanna go ahead and get my printer preheating. Um, not my printer, my press. This is the 16 by 20 digital swinger, digital nights 
swinger. I do like the 16 by 20 just because you can print large prints, obviously, t-shirts, blankets, things like that. So we did go ahead. Um, I do have it linked down in our description, also in my Amazon store. I love this press so much. We've been using it ever since we started doing sublimation. I'm gonna preheat it to 380 degrees, three, and the press time is gonna be 50 seconds, five zero seconds. That's what we always print our t-shirts on. Anything that we press that is like a t-shirt or blanket, bags, that's what we normally press at. Obviously you're gonna have different settings with a tumbler press and then obviously the Cricut mug press is also different. And there actually are three different heat settings on the Cricut mug press if you guys didn't know that. I will try to do a video soon on that. You guys can see I cut all around these designs but I did just cut all the way around, top, bottom, left and right. They don't have to be straight, don't have to be perfect. Some people do tear around their design instead of the cutting just because they don't want press lines. They don't want press lines around their design. But the press lines are not permanent, guys. Those are just temporary. Um, obviously, where the press was hot and was pressing the edge of the design, it's just showing where it was pressed. It's not gonna be permanent. You can literally rinse the shirt and dry the shirt and the lines will disappear. Also, while the press is preheating, I am going to use my lint roller, lint roll my t-shirts because if you don't, you're gonna end up with specks on your shirt. So always be sure to lint roll your t-shirts or any material that you are sublimating. I do this even with tumblers and glasses. I did bring my tape down here with me because I wanna tell you guys that most people tape their design on their t-shirt or most of the time I only tape my tumblers and glasses. And when I do, I use this clear sublimation tape but linked in my Amazon store. It is my favorite tape. I've used a lot of different tapes and tried a bunch of tapes. And so far, this is my favorite specifically for tumblers and glasses. So I went ahead and came back upstairs to show you guys my sublimation paper. This is protection paper for your press and then also for the item that you are pressing. So like for a t-shirt, you wanna make sure that you have a piece of this butcher paper in between the front and back of the shirt, basically just inside the t-shirt. You're gonna need one for the bottom of the press one piece for inside of the t-shirt and then one for on top of the t-shirt. Um, sublimation ink can definitely stain your press and then also get onto other materials that you might press afterward. It can also bleed through the t-shirt, which you don't want because you don't want your ink to go through the back of the shirt. I said three pieces, but you're gonna need six pieces because you don't want to reuse the paper for the next t-shirt. So specifically to do these two t-shirts, I'm gonna need six pieces of butcher paper. All right, so I have my butcher paper ready, my print, my t-shirt. All right, and here is the piece of butcher paper that I cut down to fit inside of the shirt. You can see that it will fit perfectly inside of the shirt. Take one piece of butcher paper and put it over your press to protect the press. And then here's our t-shirt with the butcher paper inside. See the butcher paper inside the shirt between the front and back of the t-shirt. So this, I did forget to tell you guys that the butcher paper roll that you guys saw earlier was from Sam's Club. I recommend getting it from Sam's. I also have it linked in my Amazon store. I do think it's cheaper just to go get it at Sam's though or Costco, but you're just gonna do three fingers down from the collar, flip your design in half like this, press it down on the top and the bottom of the paper. Let me show you. You can just pinch it down right there if you fold your design in half exactly. And it's not gonna mess up your print at all. And then just press it right there. Tan tape this design if you don't want it to move around by accident. So I definitely do recommend that. 380 degrees for 50 seconds. Guys, ignore this ugly floor on this side. We only had flooring for this side and we are only renting this house. So we don't wanna just, you know, spend all this money on flooring when we don't need to. We're gonna go ahead and press for 50 seconds, five zero. All right guys, and the timer just went off. Guys, and this is always my favorite part. I absolutely love taking the butcher paper off. And that goes for tumblers and t-shirts and glasses, pretty much everything that I press. I love seeing how it turns out. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how this came out. One, two, three. I love how this turned out, guys. It is so pretty. Um, if you guys have been watching us for a while, you know that we've only sublimated on other t-shirts using other materials such as um, a poly spray, we've used vinyls, and um, a bunch of different other printing processes to print onto colored t-shirts. And now this is our first time printing on a colored polyester shirt. 
and I just love how this turned out. So if you guys are getting into the t-shirt business and specifically sublimation, and you're trying to figure out how to print colored t-shirts without using cotton t-shirts, this is definitely the way to go, guys. Like I said, these are 100% polyester t-shirts, so they sublimate very, very well, which I already knew that because that's what we use for other sublimation. So if you guys are interested in these blanks, I will have them linked down below. It is with AJ Blanks. She has adult and children's t-shirts. And it's time to do the next shirt, guys. I'm super excited for the gray one um, because of the spooky design. So let's go ahead and press that one too. I really love how both of these turned out, guys. Let me know down in the comments what you think of both of the t-shirts. Tell me which one is your favorite. And if you guys are looking for some colored sublimation t-shirts, I do have them linked down in the description um, under AJ Blinks, and then just sublimation blinks down in my description. Both of these designs were purchased off of Etsy. So if you guys want to make these exact t-shirts, definitely go check out her Etsy shop. I also do have sublimation designs in my Etsy shop if you guys want to use them. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of these t-shirts. Be sure to like my video if you did like it, and be sure to subscribe if you guys want to see more of my videos. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!